if you own Mercedes, you probably seen some weird stuff in this car. For example, if you open this rear door handle on this car, you'll see this really strange groove. There is like a hook. Is there a reason for that? Okay, here's another one. Here is a front passenger door. Let me show you something that boggles my mind. On the right side of a passenger kick panel, you can see this weird piece of plastic. I'm scared to open it. What can it be? Do you think it's just a decoration or something important? I have to admit, most people who are watching this channel are very smart people. Well, maybe except this one. Don't number one. Don't blind people with headlights. For about the last 5-10 years, Mercedes has come with automatic headlights. The headlight switch may look like this one, like this one, like this one, or something similar. But regardless of how these switches look, they all have the same thing in common, the auto position, which is recommended. This way you don't have to switch the headlights on and off during the day or night. They switch by themselves. However, one downside of that setup is there is no off position meaning you can't turn the headlights off even if you want to. Now you may ask why would I need to switch the headlights off anyway? Let me show you an example. A few days ago I was sitting inside my car and it was a very hot day. I didn't want to turn off the car so I could keep my air conditioner going. Since my car was still running and it was dark outside, the headlights were automatically turned on. So all these nice people at the restaurant were blinded by my headlights. But I had no way of turning the headlights off since this car doesn't have an off position to begin with. Of course I could have switched off the headlights by shutting down the whole car, but then I would lose my air conditioner. If you look at the switch, you can see the parking lights position on the left side, which turns the parking lights only when you switch the car off. However, if your car engine is running, your Mercedes is smart enough not to turn those parking lights on. Now you can sit inside your car without stopping your engine, still enjoying your AC, while your headlights do not blind people on the street. Don't number two, don't replace the wrong fuse. Many Mercedes owners don't have fuse box diagrams and spend a gazillion of dollars buying books, service manuals, or even paying for online services. Let's open this first aid kit compartment. And here you can see there is a first aid kit. And right in behind you can see a fuse box. So it has a lot of fuses circuit breakers, smaller, bigger relays. But if you look on the top of it, there is like a little piece of paper right there. And not many people know about it. So let's pull it up and see what it is. And bam, it's basically a diagram for your car fuses. And how would you know that it's hidden right there? Here you can see all the fuses, all the circuits, diagrams, blueprints and fuse locations in your car. And if you turn to the back, there is a full explanation about every one and each of them. Don't number three, don't lose the volume. There is one Mercedes problem that a lot of people experience. You may not have this problem, but you may have it in the future. And the problem is the sudden loss of volume. 
so your stereo system volume becomes very quiet and no matter how much you adjust it's still very quiet and sometimes the volume just disappears completely if you go to mercedes-benz dealership this problem can be very expensive to fix diagnostics parts and labor can cost a lot of money but the good thing i'm gonna show you how to fix it yourself and i'm gonna show you some real magic if your car is equipped with the central touchpad like this one which is available on the latest mercedes models here is what you need to do you need to swipe your fingers to the left five times and you have to say this magic words abra kadabra shazam well let's skip the magic words let's just do the swiping but first we have to go to settings to display a quick access one two three four five six okay you have to do six times not five now we magically entered the so-called dealer menu it has a lot of stuff that requires a separate tutorial but we'll concentrate on the first one which is audio volume and here you can adjust all the audio levels of your car like uh, comfort volume volume max minimum or you can actually adjust the volume of the entire car so if you see the volume drop to the minimum all you have to do just adjust it to the right and it will increase the volume for the whole audio system of your vehicle don't number four don't change the screen while we talk about the central touchpad which can also look like this one click this one click this one or something similar the problem many people encounter is if you want to change the radio station while displaying another screen like navigation for example you would need to go to home button then select radio and then while you're in the radio menu you can change station any station you like or you can click on it and just uh, roll the station on the button like this and then after you change the station you have to go back home and then select navigation again and then while you're in navigation you can listen to that specific radio station which involves too many steps and creates a lot of distraction while driving and you have to do it every time you want to change the station so here's how to change the radio station very quickly without changing the screen all you have to do is just press this little button on top of the central touchpad and now you can control and change the radio station without leaving the navigation screen which only takes a few seconds how easy is that it's much faster and safer don't number five don't shift by mistake this next problem usually happens to the new mercedes owners but also to many mercedes veterans if you look behind the steering wheel you'll notice this pedal shifters with the plus sign to upshift and the minus to downshift they are so cool that i'm gonna make a separate video on how to use them but sometimes it can make many people nervous especially people who never used a stick shift before while driving and turning the steering wheel you can hit the downshift minus button by accident then all of a sudden you're in the lower gear in the manual shifting as you can see from the letter m on the speedometer your rpm jumps like crazy and your car starts making all these screeching noises at that point and some people will go from peace to panic but fortunately there is nothing to worry about first of all the transmission is still automatic so even if you downshift by accident and your rpm goes really high into the red zone the transmission will automatically upshift because it has built-in protection it's smart enough not to let you damage it and secondly here is how to switch your transmission back to automatic shifting simply press and hold the plus pedal for a few seconds until you see letter d on your display which means you put the transmission back to automatic shifting and you can do it on the fly now you're back to normal don't number six don't turn the climate control off some mercedes climate controls look like this one like this one 
like this one or something similar. But regardless of how they look, most of them have one problem in common. It's not very easy to turn the entire system off. Look how many times I have to press this button to turn the system off. It's not very convenient, especially while you drive. What kind of ridiculous engineering is that? But there is a good explanation. Here is the thing. Mercedes actually doesn't want you to turn it off. Mercedes vehicles are known for their very quiet interior and very good filtration. So most Mercedes interiors are airtight. And that can be a problem if you decide to turn off the air condition completely. That can be a problem. Since the interior is airtight, there is very little air coming from the outside. If you drive inside Mercedes and you turn off the climate control completely, the air will be getting very stuffy. And little by little, the oxygen inside your car will be reduced. As a result, some people sometimes get headache. They don't even know where it's coming from. And it's coming from you, depriving yourself of the sufficient amount of oxygen. The same problem can be if you use a recirculation button for the extended period of time. You can always open windows or you can open sunroof, but then you're going to get very dirty unfiltered air from the outside it's much better to close everything and just use get air from the climate control which is filtrated and it's fresh most latest mercedes vehicles have automatic protection suppose you switch the climate control off completely or use the recirculation button for extended period of time in that case mercedes will turn this button off automatically or it will switch the air condition back on automatically after a certain period of time so it has some protection so you really don't choke yourself inside but it's only on the latest models on the older models you have to do it manually that's the reason mercedes doesn't want you to turn the climate control off completely so instead i recommend hitting the auto button and just setting the desired interior temperature to make it warmer or cooler Depending on your model, sometimes you can see the temperature on display. The only problem is that you can only control the temperature of one side of the vehicle's interior. But if you select a sync button, you can control both temperatures for the left and right side of the interior by using a single switch. You don't have to do anything else. Mercedes climate control will control the rest. Just make your life simple. Don't number seven. Don't leave without the rest. There is an excellent feature not many people use, but personally, I use it all the time. If you look at the AC button carefully, you will see the label REST right below the label AC, which has been available on most Mercedes models over the past 10-15 years. In some models, it looks like this, like this, like this, or something similar. So what it means is you can use the same button for two completely different functions, AC and REST. AC works when the ignition is on and the engine is running, and the REST works only when the car is turned off completely. So first turn the car off completely, and then press this rest button. Now this climate control blower will continue to cool down this car for about 30 minutes while the vehicle is switched off. By the way, it can cool down or heat depending on what was used before turning off the car, heater or air conditioner. So I can go shopping and do some stuff. I'll be back. Now I'm back from my shopping and as you can see my AC still blows the cool air. Now I have to say it doesn't really cool down or heats your vehicle's interior, instead it uses the residual cold or heat from your system. So it's not as powerful as when you use AC or heater while the engine is running, but it's much better than nothing. Don't number 8. Don't use this hook. If you look at the rear door handle, you will notice this 
little opening right here. And I had a few people asking, what the heck is that? And when I tell them what it is, most people don't even believe me, even though it's true. So, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's a coat hook. Can you believe this? Only Mercedes could have come up with something like that. I gotta say, it looks so weird. This one feature, I don't even recommend using, unless it's a Halloween or something. What I do recommend using are hooks inside the car, like this one for a smaller bag. And those two hooks for bigger shopping bags. And as you can see, they're not going anywhere. This way, all your bags won't fly all over the car. Don't number nine. Don't be afraid to step on it. Many of you, especially brand new Mercedes owners, make exactly the same mistake. You guys don't press gas pedal hard enough. And I know why. A lot of cars, when you start it, when you put in the gear, the car is ready to move. So when you push accelerator, the car starts to speed up and then you drop accelerator and your foot is in the air and the car is flying on its own. And I've had a lot of different cars and that's basically how it works. However, in the past 20, 30 years, most Mercedes models have foot sensitive pedals. It means the pedal senses the pressure from your foot. So when you push accelerator, it senses how much pressure you apply. So if you push a little bit, the car was going to go a little bit. If you push a little harder, the car is going to go a little harder. And if you step and hold all the way, Mercedes call it kick down, you're going to get full maximum power. But also what happens, when you release gas pedal, it also senses, so it actually slows down the car before you even hit brake pedal. So in the Mercedes, if you push accelerator and then drop it, it actually will slow down your car. So on the Mercedes, you have to keep your foot on the gas pedal. You have to keep your foot rested. Don't release it, because if you release it, it slows down the car. Now, the faster you release it, the faster your car will be slowed down. So you have to push and you kind of need to hold it until the car goes faster. When the car goes faster, just rest your foot on the gas pedal. Okay? Don't remove it. And if you need power, for example, if you need, uh, if, you, if you want to change lane and you want to do it quick, step and hold. Step and hold. So you kind of can control with one pedal. Only with gas pedal you can go faster or you can go slower without even using brake pedal. Don't number 10, don't buy unless you can verify. Let me show you something that boggles my mind. On the right side of a passenger kick panel, you can see this weird piece of plastic. I'm scared to open it. What can it be? Do you think it's just a decoration or something important? Let's remove it and see what's behind it. And bam, you can see the VIN number of your car engraved in the frame of your vehicle. What you see is called a hidden VIN number. You probably have never seen it, but I can assure you that the law enforcement people are very familiar with that hidden VIN. You may ask me why you need to go there when you can clearly see the VIN number under the windshield and also on the body plate. 
Well, because both of these plates can be easily replaced by criminals. So before you buy the car from a private party, it would be a good idea to check the hidden VIN and compare it to both other VINs. Make sure that all of them match with the same number, because you don't want to buy a lemon, or even worse, a stolen vehicle. I'm sure you don't want to lose all your money when buying a used car. In some models you can also check the VIN number inside the secret electronic menu. You can watch my other video top 7 Mercedes problems you can fix yourself where I show you how to get there. The link is below. Now, how would you know the location of that hidden VIN number in your car? It's actually very simple. All the locations of the VIN numbers for your specific model are listed inside your owner's manual book. And the question of today is, how many don'ts out of 10 did you already know about? Please let us know in the comment section below.